Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Will Gerling, sports and performance nutritionist, and today we're talking about chicken, beef, soy, tofu, tempa, fish. That's right, we're talking about protein. So you obviously know a lot about protein. It's spoken about so much in magazines, newspaper articles, pretty much anywhere based upon nutrition. You're gonna be seeing things on protein. A quick cap on why we need protein. Protein is the primary driver of recovery, cell regeneration, muscle development, adaption to exercise, both endurance and strength. So it's pretty integral in our diets. It's also really important when we're trying to preserve lean muscle mass in a calorie deficit, which a lot of you are. We're gonna go over all the different areas of what, when, why, and the different topics that you need to know to help you with your goal and what you're trying to achieve. First up, amounts. Obviously, the amount is thrown around a lot. We're gonna talk about a lot of different numbers here, but just replay it to where you need to be. If we look at an everyday individual who's not training, who's not dieting, the recommended daily amount or RDA is 0.8 grams per kilogram body weight. Now, it's not much, it's pretty achievable. But then we get a huge array of different numbers when we start looking at different topics. If we're looking at maintenance, numbers from 1.6 to 2 grams if you're doing weightlifting and gym and power sports or 1.2 to 1.8 for maintenance for endurance sport and then if you're doing concurrent training it goes from like 1.8 to 2.7 grams per kilogram body weight and obviously it changes again once we're looking at dieting compared to muscle mass gain so there's a huge spectrum there and a lot of potential for you to feel confused. So let's make that easy for you. If you are not dieting and have a moderate training load and are doing endurance sport, 1.2 to 1.8 grams is more than enough for you. If you are a gym, powerlifting, weightlifting individual or strength sport athlete individual and you're on maintenance and your training volume is more around three times a week, possibly four, then also 1.6 to 2 grams is more than enough for you. The caveats now come in when we start talking about dieting and we start talking about increase in lean muscle mass. If we are dieting, minimum recommendations are 2 grams per kilogram body weight. This is the same for vegans. Even if you look at game changers, if you follow that propaganda and Check their references. Even the reference papers on their protein show that two grams per kilogram body weight, if you are a dieting individual and vegan, that is the amount that you need. If you're trying to gain lean muscle mass, then we also need at least two grams per kilogram body weight. But there's great research coming out from Antonio et al. from America showing that intakes of three to four grams per kilogram body weight is most beneficial in increasing lean muscle mass with negligible fat mass gain. Whereas a lot of people who do try and gain some muscle mass do gain some fat mass. And that's obviously what you want to avoid during that time. The other area we need to consider are concurrent training. Concurrent training means that you're doing two different kinds of sports or activity concurrently or at the same time. Not literally at the same time, but together over your week, whether that's in the same day or over the same week. And what you need to do is, once again, at least two grams per kilogram body weight because you're gonna to need to recover several different times in different ways. So it's important that you're getting enough protein to facilitate both those different types of exercise. And then lastly is the volume of training. If you have high volume, if you have volume with intensity, then your requirement for protein, you guessed it, is also higher because you have so much more demand on your body. If you have more demand on your muscles and on your body, you have more demand for recovery, which means what facilitates that recovery is protein. And obviously, as we mentioned before, adaption to exercise. If we have more exercise and more stimulus, we need more ability to recover and adapt by having the right amount of protein. 
So to summarise all of that, you're going to say, Will, what do I really need? I would say that if you are a high exercising individual that is trying to either lose body fat or gain muscle mass, at minimum you need to be having 2 grams per kilogram body weight. But if you're not high exercising, you're not dieting, then ranging around 1.6 grams should be adequate. And of course, if you're really trying to gain lean muscle mass, pushing more towards that 3 to 4 grams per kilogram body weight. It might be tough, but it is worthwhile. Okay, so we've gone over the amount you need. Next we need to talk about how often and how much in each frequency, essentially. Every three to four hours is the recommendation. This is because muscle protein synthesis is stimulated when we eat protein. And this is the action of causing recovery and stimulation that we get from protein. Muscle protein synthesis comes up and then we are in a positive protein balance where all of this happens. If we have no protein, we're in a negative protein balance. And this is where things like cell and muscle breakdown happen. There are some benefits to that, something called cell detoxification or autophagy. I do talk about that briefly in one of my other videos, link in the corner, about fasting. If we're looking for optimal recovery, optimal performance, optimal increase in lean muscle mass, and preservation of lean muscle mass in a calorie deficit, then we want to be up here in that positive protein balance as much as possible. So protein every three to four hours. This may be more frequent if you are trying to gain lean muscle mass and you are having that three to four grams per kilogram body weight. Just because the sheer amount of protein you're gonna to need to have is just gonna be a lot greater and you're gonna to wanna to spread it out through your day more. How much should we have at each sitting? Now this comes at a really good point to also bring in post-exercise feeding and how much we should have there as well. The recommendations for how much protein you should have at a sitting because a lot of people speak about you can't absorb more than 20 grams, you can't absorb more than 40 grams. It's dose dependent. So between 0.3 and 0.5 grams per kilogram body weight in a sitting is the amount that you're wanting, with especially the 0.5 being in the post-workout period where it sees the most benefit and we also see the ability to take on more protein in that period. So generally through your day, 0.3 to 0.5 with more of that 0.5 especially in the post-workout period. That should maximally stimulate muscle protein synthesis and help you start to recover and adapt and build. This segues really nicely onto our next topic, which is age-related dosage response. So the amount you need per sitting, as we've mentioned, is that range of 0 0.3 to 0 0.5. And it's a lot easier to stimulate when you are younger. But as we get older, we get things like age-related muscle wastage or sarcopenia, and we start to lose muscle mass. And we also see that it's harder to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. And the minimum amount or the optimal amount that we see to help stimulate that is 40 grams a serving. So if you are 40 and older, male or female, that the recommendation is 40 grams per sitting to stimulate that, to help preserve, recover, and adapt to exercise. That may be something worth considering if you are an older individual, and it's definitely gonna help you, one, recover, but also preserve that lean muscle mass as you start to get a bit older. Next is fasted training. So many people talk about potential muscle wastage in fasted training. And when we look at long duration exercise, then the contribution of amino acids or protein to exercise energy is only 1%. And 1% is not much. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. There was also a really great study that looked at comparing a low carb, high fat diet to a mixed diet and the effect of the contribution of amino acids and protein to exercise done with low carbohydrate availability. And it wasn't different. It was the same. It was 1% still. So it's not something I would worry about too much. What I would be aware of though, is if you are going out for four or more hours, whether that's a ride or a very long run, that you are still having protein every three 
to four hours. So if you ate two hours before your ride or run and have protein there and you go out for four hours, that's going to be six hours till you eat again and maybe longer if you are doing obviously a longer ride. So it's important that we have some protein midway through that ride, mainly because it's going to improve our recovery afterwards. It's going to reduce our cortisol response slightly. It's also going to improve our ability to recover those muscles after that session. This is even more important if one, we're doing a hard training block or a training camp, we're doing audaxes, we're doing multi-day events or sportives, or we're just doing a lot of hours over our week and we need to really recover. So getting that protein in regularly, despite riding, is, or the duration of your event, is important. Next, we have pre-sleep feedings. This is the amount of protein that we're having before sleep and if it has an effect on our recovery. And the answer is yes. If we have slow digesting protein like casein or dairy products like milk and yogurt, which the protein content is predominantly casein, 80% casein, then it's gonna release a slow, steady release of amino acids during our sleep and enable us to carry on recovering and preserve that lean muscle mass. So if you are in a particularly hard block again, or trying to gain lean muscle mass or preserve lean muscle mass in a calorie deficit, then maybe having pre-sleep protein might be worthwhile for you. Having high protein diets is spoken about a lot and a lot of people out there may say it's bad for your health. There's another great study by Antonio et al again, who looked at a group of individuals over one year of having a high protein intake and looked at blood markers and health markers on them and the effect of that high protein diet. And after one year, it didn't affect them adversely in any way from having a high protein diet. So if you are a healthy individual, then having a high protein diet, especially with adequate fruit and vegetables and things like this, is not gonna be any problem for your health whatsoever. If you do have other health conditions, then that would be based on a case by case basis. And that's it guys, we've gone over everything. We've covered how much to have, when to have it, age related, pre-sleep, fasted training, we've gone over it all. So if you did really enjoy today's video, drop a comment down below. Let me know which one really resonated with you and gave you the most help maybe for your goal. As always guys, if you enjoyed today's video, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It does mean a lot to me when you do that and really makes doing this so worthwhile. So remember, fuel for the work required, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye. <laughs>